Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Professor Avinash Dadich. I am a Professor of Law and Dean of Institute of Legal Studies and Research, GLA University, Mathura. My dear students, today we will talk about litigation management in India, corporate litigation in management in India. We will see few uh, important cases, uh, especially how litigation happens in the corporate sector. Uh, no doubt that in your organization, the legal team will take care of the litigations. When I say litigation means the cases in the courtroom, okay, cases with the regulators. So, your legal team will take care of these things. However, the corporate leaders and the corporate executives, they also have very much interest in the litigation. Because the outcome of litigation can really affect your businesses. Like suppose if you have made an agreement or contract with someone. Uh, suppose like the 10 crore rupees and after 2 months or 3 months that, uh, that agreement is breached by the opposite party, then your legal team decides to file a case against them. In that scenario, the ultimate outcome or the ultimate effect uh, will not go on the legal team, but on the business team because they win and they lose their business. Okay. So, litigation is a very important aspect for any corporation. And sometime even the litigation can change the business strategies also. So, for example, if you decide to launch a new product or a new marketing communication, you know, you decide to do something new for your business. But ultimately, the matter goes to the courts that or maybe the regulatory bodies that this is allowed or not allowed. So, obviously, your legal team and the lawyers will take care of it, but then the outcome is directly connected with your business strategies. Okay. If the courts allow you to do something, then only you can do it. So, you are very much concerned and you should be very much concerned that how litigation management happens in India in corporate world. Introduction. India is a common law country with a system of adversarial dispute resolution. While litigation and arbitration are the most common means of resolving disputes, parties can also select conciliation or mediation both before during the proceeding. The litigation matters concerning corporate disputes is represented by the corporate lawyers. They represent company or a partnership organization and advise them on the legal rights and responsibilities. Corporate attorney may work for a medium or a big legal firm or for a regulatory organization such as SEBI, IRDA, RBI and other regulatory bodies. So, when I say the system of adversarial dispute uh, resolution, it means that the parties has to prove that they are right. In the civil matters, uh, they have to prove that they are the right and the other party is wrong. So, you also have to act upon, you know. Second, uh, litigation is like litigation is basically uh, when cases are going to the courtroom or to the regulatory bodies, but you can also choose arbitration also. Okay. So, arbitration can also be very important aspect as I told you earlier, maybe I will repeat again that arbitration is a very important tool to find quick and efficient uh, judgments from the court. So, the normal courts are not under your control, they do whatever they want to do, their time limits are not in, uh, in your control, their procedures are, uh, are not in your control. So, you can create your own court. So, arbitration is that mechanism where the parties in the corporate litigation, they can create their own court. So, in your contract itself, you can mention that first we will go for the mediation or conciliation, then we will go for arbitration and finally, we will go to the courtroom. So, court is not the first place to go. First, you should start with conciliation or mediation. Conciliation and mediation is more informal procedure where both parties can sit together and they can try to find a solution. So, the mediator or the conciliator uh, do not give them any legal solution. 
okay here i think the business executives can also play an important role because ultimately you do understand your business very well the same thing with the opposite party and the long litigation will not help anyone so in that scenario with the help of the mediators and conciliator you can meet the opposite party sit together try to find a solution that what went wrong why it went wrong what we can do now so maybe you guys can find a middle path uh, for the both benefits if our uh, mediation and conciliations uh, fail then you can go for arbitration so arbitration is a mechanism where both parties chooses one uh, judges each like you choose one judge the opposite party chooses another judge when i say judge means not the judicial officers you can choose anyone the retired of a retired judge or an officer or a technical expert anyone who is qualified as an arbitrator okay so you choose one and one and both those judges they choose the third judge okay so then there are the, like a three bench a three people court and you can choose the location of your arbitration like you can say okay the arbitration will take place in delhi or any city in india or outside of india even if you can choose the law of the arbitration you can say that the law will be the indian law or the french law or the american law or maybe the international law so you can choose the law you can choose the time duration also that within 6 months we will finish our arbitration so it's absolutely in your control the procedure rules regulations and finally those arbitrators will sit and give you a award like award means like a judgment okay so if you are not normally arbitration awards are final but if you believe that there is some fraud or public policy judgment or if anything is wrong with the arbitration award then only you can approach to court okay then uh, and uh, when i say about the corporate attorney yeah uh, continue kar raha hai na oh sorry yeah corporate attorney so you will find different types of lawyer in our country some lawyers are civil lawyers some are criminal lawyers family lawyers okay so in the same way you will find corporate lawyers okay business lawyers so mainly those business lawyers are working in small medium and big law firms and law firm is a concept you should know that normally advocates are working independently but then for the corporate law they create a group of lawyers like a, you know it's not a company basically but it's like a partnership firm where more and more lawyers like 10 20 30 50 100 200 200 even the biggest law firm in india is having almost 800 lawyers so those lawyers they are working together and they have different specializations in their law firm like for example if you say cb laws irda rbi and arbitration and contract law they have very different specializations and you can take their services also the term corporate disputes includes the disputes relating to antitrust mala fide breach of contract breach of fiduciary duty business torts class action debater and uh, creditor employment and labor fraud and misrepresentation insurance cover intellectual property rights patent infringement uh, board member disputes partnership disputes privacy cyber security and data breach product liability real estate land use and environmental litigation restrictive agreements securities limit uh, litigation shareholding disputes uh, and derivative actions tax disputes trade secret and unfair competition so this is just like a small list you know it can go and go on so you can understand that in a company you will find so many types of corporate litigation it's not a very simple just you know the contract breach there are so many disputes uh, may arise within the company corporate conflicts are distinct from the organizational internal disagreements which are often resolved by the management so lit- when i say corporate conflicts so corporate litigation means it's not the internal organizations conflict okay May- once you are involved in any litigation or any dispute with the outside party or even your employee wa- uh, wants to file case against your company then the matter will go to outside of the court okay however in the event of a business disagreement the firm or its promoters or executive board becomes parties to the litigation 
disputes over a contract, a labor claim or a business problem are example of such matter. So, sometimes what happens that if there is, there is an action against your company like for example, labor claim you know if your company has failed to uh, comply with some labor rules and regulations, then uh, the labor authority will take action against your company, but the executive, the business executive, the CEO, CFO and the responsible senior leaders in your company, they will become the parties of litigation. The case will be filed against those people also, your company as well as those individuals also. So, you can understand that when you see the corporate litigation, it is not only against your company, but even the individuals also can the part of that litigation and criminal and civil cases. Key laws and regulation concerning corporate sector. Following are the governing laws for the companies. So, like ok. So, first we will talk about the companies law, companies act 2013 and rules made there under for the unlisted companies such as private companies, foreign companies, public companies, not for profit companies ok. The securities and exchange board India 1992 the SEBI act and the Securities Exchange Board of India listing obligations and disclosure requirement regulation 2009 for companies listed on stock exchange in India. So, company law is very much applicable on you whether you are a public company or a private company, you are a foreign company, you are a limited liability company or a not for profit company. If you are having any type of company structure, company laws apply on you. The Securities and Exchange Board of India will apply if you are listed company in the security exchange, then all the rules and regulations of uh, SEBI will also apply on you. Then the Foreign Exchange of Management Act 1999 and regulations made there under in the case of foreign subsidiary. So, if you are doing any foreign exchange like if you are, con if you are sending or receiving any foreign currency, foreign direct investment, then this law will apply on you. The securitize, securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of security interest act 2000. So, this is also very important when you are uh, in a finance business and you are taking some NPA uh, property under your control or you are restructuring of the financial uh, arrangement in your company. So, then this law will apply you. And then the, uh, the latest one the insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 made there under for the governance and resolution of insolvent and bankrupt companies notable for the corporate insolvency resolution process CIRP. So, this law bankruptcy law will apply on you if your company fails to uh, fulfill its financial obligations ok. If your company is not able to pay uh, the financial dues to the vendors, suppliers, employees or anyone then uh, this law can apply on you ok. So, let us understand first the dispute resolution mechanism as it as is the practice worldwide India also prescribed to judicial quasi judicial as well as the alternate judicial dispute re resolution methods. Besides court in certain cases the forums such as tribunals and administrative bodies have been set up and may be approached for the resolution of the certain disputes. So, like for example, uh, if you have some environmental issues in your company, if someone is saying that you have violated some environmental issues, then maybe you can uh, contact to NGT like you, the case can be filed against you uh, before the NGT National Green Tribunal. If you have some pollution issues, then the state pollution board can ask you explanation and case can be against. Uh, case can be filed against you before the state pollution board ok. So, these are all administrative bodies, they are not judicial bodies, but they are acting as a quasi uh, judicial bodies, they are doing job of an administrator as well as the judge also, but they are dealing with very very specific cases like for example, labor issues, the case can be filed against you uh, before the labor commissioner. Okay, so, labor commissioner is not a judicial officer, he is an administrative officer, but he is also implementing labor laws. Okay, so, there are few law, uh, rules, regulations are coming under his preview. For same thing when you are filing some intellectual property, maybe you have to go before the intellectual property authorities like IPR, patent, copyright, trademark and case can be filed against you before these agencies also. So, dispute re, uh, resolution mechanism forums under the Companies Act ok. 
सो एन सी एल टी एंड एन 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 सी एल ए टी स्पेशल कोर्ट्स मीडिएशन एंड कंसिलेशन पैनल कंपाउंडिंग ऑफ ऑफेंसेज एस आई पी ओ एंड एस आई पी ओ इज ए सीरियस प्राउड इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफिस सो फर्स्ट सी नेशनल कंपनी लॉ ट्रिब्यूनल एंड अपीलियर ट्रिब्यूनल द सेटिंग अप ऑफ नेशनल कंपनी लॉ ट्रिब्यूनल एंड नेशनल कंपनी लॉ अपीलियर ट्रिब्यूनल इज ए वेरी बिग शिफ्ट विद द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ एस्टेब्लिशिंग ए सिंगल फॉरम ऑफ एडजुडिकेट ऑल डिस्प्यूट रिलेटिंग टू कंपनीज इंडिया सो दिस इज लाइक अ बिग शिफ्ट यू नो अर्लियर कंपनी लॉ लिटिगेशन वॉज हैंडल बाय द हाई कोर्ट्स एंड द लोअर कोर्ट्स एंड ओबियसली दोज कोर्ट्स वर नॉट वेरी मच स्पेशलाइज इन द कंपनी लॉ बट नाउ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया हैज एस्टेब्लिश द स्पेशल ट्रिब्यूनल स्पेशल कोर्ट ओनली फॉर द कंपनी लॉ डिस्प्यूट्स सो जो एन सी एल टी एंड द अपील गोज टू एन सी एल ई टी अपीलियर ट्रिब्यूनल ओके एंड देन फ्रॉम अपीलियर ट्रिब्यूनल इट गोज टू द सुप्रीम कोर्ट नेशनल कंपनी लॉ ट्रिब्यूनल एन सी एल टी विच डील्स विद शेयर होल्डिंग डिस्प्यूट्स केसेज ऑफ ऑपरेशन एंड मिसमैनेजमेंट वेरियस कंपनी रो रिलेटेड क्लेम्स एंड कॉरपोरेट इंसॉलमेंसी द कंपनीज एक्ट टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन अटैम्प्ट टू मॉडर्नाइज द वे कंपनीज इन इंडिया आर ओन एंड ऑपरेटेड इन सिंक विद द प्रैक्टिस अक्रॉस द ग्लोब सो द कंपनीज एक्ट was heavily uh, amended and changed in 2013 to give a globalized outlook to our company law and uh, to implement this new amendment the government of india established nclt and nclet the companies act 2013 makes it possible for parties in a dispute before government administration such as regional director registrar of company so they are also administrative bodies at the same time they are acting as a judge so registrar of companies is the forum where you have to register your company or the tribunals formed under ca act 2013 like then nclt and nclet to to request for the dispute to be referred to the mediation or conciliation the process of mediation and conciliation is uh, is to be conducted before expert and paneled with the mediation and conciliation panel section 442 of the companies act 2013 introduce mediation as a alternate dispute re, uh, resolution mechanism within the framework of the companies act 2013 for implementation of this section the companies mediation and conciliation rule 2016 have been notified on 9 september 2016 i have already explained you the concept of mediation so you can see that the the concept of mediation is more and more introduced in all aspects of business law and even the family uh, in the individual and personal uh, litigation the company's mediation and conciliation rule 2016 uh, created the opportunity to resolve some such regulatory disputes between the company and other entities through the mediation and conciliation if th if these rules were not enacted the only way to resolve such dispute would have been through the statutory body mentioned under the relevant provision of the companies act like the nclt and nclet or the central government but now before going to these judicial and administrative bodies parties can solve their disputes through the peaceful manner through the mediators this mediation or conciliation uh, takes place through mediators conciliator appointed from the panel created by the central government called as mediation and conciliation panel proceedings initiated before the central government or national company or tribunal or nclt can be resolved through mediation or conciliation please note that the settlement agreement arrived at is not directly enforceable but is enforceable as the order of the relevant authority under the companies act so it's not like that if you go to a mediation and the mediator will give you a judgment he will write his report he will submit his report and uh, suggestions and the decision of the both parties to the court nclt and finally only nclt will pass an order because the uh, order of the uh, mediator will not will not have any legal enforceability a mediator facilitate discussion between the parties directly or by communicating with each other through the mediator by assisting parties in identifying issues reducing misunderstanding 
clarifying priorities, exploring areas of compromise, generating options in an attempt to solve the dispute and emphasizing that it is the party's own responsibility for making decisions which affect them. So, the basic ideology of mediation that both parties they do understand their good and bad. Okay. So, instead of uh, throwing them in the court litigation, complex uh, procedures, why we cannot, why we cannot create an ecosystem where both parties can sit and talk. See, most of the time litigation happens when the both parties are not ready to sit and talk. You know, they have their own egos, they have their own uh, fears, confusions. So, once they sit together and there is a qualified mediator uh, who is not trying to give them an answer, but just given a platform where in, uh, in a very professional manner they can discuss and argue and fight and finally resolve their issue. Okay. Uh, because uh, if there is a business problem, then there has to be a business solution. Not necessary that courts and these administrative agencies like NCLT or NCLAT and judicial forums uh, could give them a true business solution. And it is exp less expensive. Second, it is more quick because if they can solve their disputes within two or three days, no judicial forum will be able to solve that dispute in two to three days. Maybe it will take six, uh, two years, three years, four years. And that is not good for any business. So, you need to understand the value of mediators in uh, corporate litigation. So, if you come across in your company that company is going for too much litigation, maybe you can recommend to your seniors that can we try for the mediate mediation. Okay. If suppose like for example, I give you a hypothetical example, uh, you breached a contract okay, and the other party is saying that you, ha you need to give me uh, 100 rupees for example and you personally believe no no I we do not need to give you 100 rupees we need to give you maybe uh, 70 rupees or 60 rupees maximum. So, for 30 40 rupees you are fighting with each other and you are giving money to the lawyers you are going to the courtroom you are investing lot of time and energy instead you can sit and discuss maybe the other party is ready to take only 60 or 70 you know after some negotiation and mediation. So, this can be a good exercise uh, for bringing more efficiency in the business. The outcome of a mediation is a settlement agreement which is binding only as a contract. Okay. A conciliator is a new thing. Conciliator in exercise of his power under section 67 and 73 of Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996 makes proposal for a settlement of the dispute by formulating or reformulating the terms of a possible settlement. The outcome of conciliation becomes statutory binding through the provision of the arbitration and conciliation act. The mediation or conciliation process in companies act 2013 is a welcome initiative especially in India where the alternative dispute uh, resolution mechanism holds greater hope for the speedy resolution of disputes as compared to the formal process of adjudication on merit by courts or tribunals. In our country where we know, like in our country we know it very well that these courts, tribunals, they are taking lot of time, like the courts are taking 5 years, 10 years, tribunals are taking again 4 years, 5 years. So, companies they need speedy adjudication, speedy means like uh, can you give me your judgment in next 1 month. Okay. So, for uh, courts and tribunals that is not possible because they have to follow a complete procedure. Okay. But these uh, mediation, conciliation, arbitrations, they can give them speedy adjudication. Leading cases by NCLT. So, innovative industries versus uh, ICIC bank. Innovative industries file an application before the Mumbai bench of the National Company Law Tribunal for the insolvency resolution procedure to be initiated as innovative was found to be default under the IBC. The main argument of innovative was that no debt was legally due as all innovative obligations and remedies for the compliance action was temporarily suspended for two years pursuant to the notification issued under the 1958. Maharashtra Relief Undertaking Act. So, main contentions was 
whether the appeal could be continued as it was lost by the innovative formal directors after the appointment of an insolvency lawyer to manage the company. Second issue was whether the IBC and Maharashtra really had an repugnance. Uh, Third, whether the non obstinance clause contained in the IBC section 236 would prevail over the non obstinance clause contained section 4 of the Maharashtra Act. So, NCLT judgment on January 17, uh, January 2017, the NCLT held that in view of the non discriminatory clause contained in section 238 of the IBC 2016, the Maharashtra relief undertaking special provision act would prevail over the non obstant in the Maharashtra relief act. As Maharashtra relief undertaking act is a state act whereas, IBC is a central act and central law prevails over the state law. So, that judgment was also upheld by the NCLT. Okay? NCLT. So, in this case they held that if, if there is a, any dispute between the state law and the central law then central law will prevail on the state law. Binani Industries versus uh, Bank of Badoda National Company Law Tribunal Kolkata Bench. CIRP process was initiated against Binani Industries by committee of creditors due to default of dues. The meeting was held on 14th March 2018 uh, with 99.43 percent of the committee of the creditors accepting Rajputana Properties Private Limited Resolution Strategy. Nevertheless, a dissent note was registered by 10.53 percent of the COC who were forced to vote in support of the resolution program. They said they had not been treated fairly relative to the other financial investors who were the corporate debaters, corporate guarantors. The RP uh, submitted a request for approval of the resolution plan in Binani Cement Limited pursuant to the section 30 and 31 of IBC, regulation 39 of insolvency and bankruptcy board. The resolution plan, uh, uh, the resolution plus or a plan of Rajputana Properties Private Limited says that the financial creditors such as the Advilicis Assets Restructuring Company Limited, IDBI Bank Limited, Bank of Baroda, Canra Bank, Bank of India, State Bank of India would be given 100 percent of verified claim, whereas lesser percentage was proposed to the claims of other financial creditors such as Export Import Bank of India and State Bank of India Hong Kong. The resolution plus was held to be discriminatory by some of the lenders and they filed the application to NCLT for not considering it and filed revised plans. Issues. So, I am just trying to give you some uh, basic you know some uh, small cases where you can understand how corporate litigation happens in real life. Whether RP ex exercised exceeded its power in appointing other professionals and outsourcing work, whether non considering of revised offers from uh, 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 ultra tech is violation of provision under IPC, the judgment. So, the first question the tribunal observed that the cost incurred by RP in engaging people was uh, very high and directed cost should be reasonable. The second question is says yes it is violative as the COC decided to negotiate with only H1 bidder which is against the basic provision of the court uh, aimed at maximizing value. The COC went ahead with the approval of plans submitted by Rajputana properties which is unjust and arbitrary company which was not an H1 bidder was and disqualified from the bidding process which is not valid due to the following. So, this is how they gave the order and the third one whether the resolution plan is discriminatory against unsured financial creditors. NCLT observed that there has been a discrimination in consideration of the claim of financial creditors in the resolution plan and resolution plan accordingly needed modification. So, they found that this resolution plan is discriminatory, where RP has ignored claims of operational creditors. The NCLT observed that a resolution in amounts payable to the operational creditor is acceptable. However, such reduction should be acceptable to all class of creditors since the plan contains settlement. 
So, this is like see you can see the complex nature of litigation where once you start litigation then all these are of complicated all these type of complicated issues are arisen and you need to give answers. Now, we see uh, earlier we were talking about the NCLT, now we will see something relating about SEBI. The mechanism as per Securities and Exchange Board of India 1992 and Securities Exchange Board of India listing obligations and disclosure requirement regulation 2009 for companies listed at a foreign exchange in India. In India, the regulation and supervision of securities market in India is mainly a responsibility of the SAB. And SEBI has been set up under the Securities and Exchange Board of India Act 1992 with a mandate to protect the interest of investors to regulate and to promote the development of securities market. So, SEBI securities complaint management system is investor centered and SEBI acts more or less as an investor's advocate. So, you need to understand when you are dealing with the financial market or capital market uh, cases can be filed against you before the SEBI also. The, com the investors can go to the SEBI and SEBI can start uh, investigation and if they find some evidences they can start case against also you. So, SEBI also act as a court in some manner uh, at least in the security market. It is the first time complainant management system as it is entertained complaints only directly from investors and no time bar. Okay, there is no time bar in the SEBI even if you believe that before 10 years the something happened you can report to the SEBI. SEBI operated the securities customer complaint system since 1992 which was renamed at the score system with the complete automation in 11 2022. The score system now in force can handle complaints so that via website investors will be able to check the status of their complaints including any action requested by SEBI or regional stock exchange. So, if you believe that any stock exchange or any company or any agent or any middle person uh, is doing something wrong in terms of security market, you can uh, the, uh, the investor can directly go to the SEBI and regional stock exchange and they will take action against those people. SEBI has required both insurer and intermediaries, intermediaries to have in place mechanism to address investors complaints. So, even as per the SEBI law uh, all companies which are connected with the capital and the financial market are under legal obligation to have a investors complaints resolution mechanism. So, they have to have some numbers, they have to have some people, they, they should have some system where the investors complaint must be resolved in a very efficient manner. Thus, when complaints are received directly at SEBI, SEBI routes them to the corresponding company. So, whenever they first they receive a complaint, they send that complaint to the concerned party and they say ok, what is your reply on this particular complaint. So, if those companies are able to resolve those issues with the investors in a very peaceful manner, then SEBI does not interfere. But in case if the SEBI finds that there is something very seriously wrong, they can take their own action also. Intermediaries uh, are required to inform SEBI the way they deal with the complaint and it is expected they will deal with within 30 days. So, within 30 days those companies must solve or must deal with that problem. In the case of brokers, SEBI also received reports from the RSEs. Through such reports, SEBI can identify the brokers that concentrate most complaints as well as whether they are recurrent topics. SEBI does not have authority to settle monetary disputes, but can impose disciplinary actions on issuers and security intermediaries. If the laws and regulation have been breached as per the RSIs by law book uh, brokers have to abide by system of arbitration. Thus, if an investor is not satisfied with the way an intermediary has deal with the complaint, it can go to the mediation and then go to arbitration. The arbitration system of RSE has worked well and the case is usually complain, uh, completed within 6 months. The redressal rate of score system is impressive in rec recent years. So, you can see the SEBI and all these regulatory body uh, before going to litigation they have created an internal mechanism where 
the people or the aggrieved parties can approach to regulators and these agencies for their complaint and with the help of the uh, market stakeholders they try to solve those issues within uh, the legal framework without going to the court room okay so now we will see some leading cases by the sebi so the first case we can see hindustan labor limited versus sebi hindustan labor limited brought 8 lakh shares of brookborn lipton india from public investment uh, investment institution unit trust of the india and two weeks prior to the public announcement of the merger of two companies hll and bblil sebi suspecting insider trading issued a so called notice to the chairman all executive directors the company secretary and then chairman of hll london based unilever was the parent company of hll and bblil and were operating under the same management sebi determined that hll and its directors were insiders because they had prior knowledge of the merger sebi further determined that hll was in the position of the upsi as mentioned under section 2k of the 1992 regulation which included any information regarding amalgamation mergers takeover that is not widely known or published for such company for general information but which if published or known is likely to substantially impact the price of security of that company in the market so in this case the hindustan lever uh, were acquiring a company or they were merging with each other so that in that situation the insider trading is possible that the chairman directors and all the senior management they were aware of this development okay so before one week if they bought the shares like eight lakh shares of the brookman uh, lipton it's a clear indication that uh, uh, you know this uh, this uh, insider trading has happened the decision of the sat uh, securities appellate tribunal led to an amendment in the definition of unpublished under section 2k which stated unpublished means information which is not published by the company or its agent or is not specified in nature explanation all the reports in print or electronic media shall not be considered as a public information so until and unless the information is published information you cannot use that information for the trading okay if the news is coming uh, if that particular information is coming in the print or electronic media that will not be considered as a published information because that is not verified by anyone okay by the same amendment sebi also introduced a new provision section 2ha which defined price sensitive information to include any information relating to an amalgamation merger or takeover as deemed price sensitive information regardless of whether such information actually has any effect the price of the securities in the market however the amendment did not definitely and expressly define generally available information and then in 2015 uh, guide regulation finally came out defining what constitute upsi by stating generally available information under section 21e which say which stated generally available information means information that is accessible to the public on a non discriminatory basis second case rakesh agrawal versus sebi in this case, a Rakesh, 1996 Rakesh Agarwal, managing director of ABS Industries Limited, signed a deal with Bayer AG, a German company, which agreed to purchase 51% of ABS Industries Limited share. Following UPSI announcement of the acquisition, the accused sold a significant portion of his ABS Industries ownership, which he owned through his brother in law, Mr. IP Kedia. Considering Mr. Kedia to be well connected in, uh, individual, SEBI held that Mr. Rakesh Agarwal was guilty of insider trading and directed him to deposit rupees 34 lakhs with investors protection funds of stock exchange Mumbai and NSE, a equal uh, proportion rupees 70 lakh rupees in each exchange to pay any investor who may make a claim afterwards. On appeal to the Securities Appellate Tribunal, it was concluded that even Mr. Agarwar had traded securities while in possession of UPSI 
he was not guilty of insider trading because his action were in the best interest of the company as bear ag was not willing to acquire the company unless it could obtain a minimum 50% of the shares and there was no intention to make a profit further sat decided that in order to penalize an insider for violating the regulation it must prove it must be proven that insider benefited unfairly from the trade the tribunal also rejected sebi's argument that insider trading jurisprudence is is found on the concept of disclose or abstain and an insider is a position of upsi cannot trade in a company's stock until he reveals the upsi after revisiting the entire jurisprudence of insider trading on requirement of mens rea under indian legal system the tribunal held trading taking into consideration the very objective of the sebi regulation prohibiting the insider trading the intention or the motive of the insider has to be taken cognizance of it is true that regulation does not specify brings in mens rea as an ingredients of insider trading but that doesn't mean that the motive need be ignored so now we will talk about some foreign exchange management act fema dispute resolution mechanism the foreign exchange management act fema was introduced by the indian government in 1999 replacing the previous foreign exchange regulation act 1973 FEMA was designed to boost external uh, payments and foreign trades. FEMA is a civil law against FERA, which was a decorian police law. FEMA applies to whole of India. It also applies to the agencies and officers located outside of India. They are managed and owned by the Indian citizen. The headquarters is situated in Delhi and known as the Enforcement Directorate. So FEMA applies to. Indian foreign exchange Indian foreign security banking financials and insurance services exporting to any product or service from India to a foreign country importing of any product or service from uh, outside India securities are defined under the public debt uh, public debt act of 1994 buying or selling any Indian entity owned by a person resident outside of India any citizen of india residing in india or in a foreign country and exchange of any kind of product or service any overseas companies owned by a non resident nri the central government under fema has established the directorate of enforcement to hold the inquiry investigation against any person who is alleged to have committed contravention of the provision of fema or rules and regulations made there under the ed investigates the contravention under section 13 of the act the ed has also given the power of compound contravention committed by accused under section 13 of the act so the fema is basically is a law where the government tries to regulate uh, foreign currency in and out from india okay so if anyone is importing or sending some foreign currency outside of india then they need to take uh, approval from the fema if they are receiving any foreign currency outside of india they need to take approval from the uh, government obviously it's very much connected with the national security of the country because lot of money is coming and going out of india for some illegal activities like the terrorism uh, drug funding uh, you know and the human trafficking sex trafficking prostitution so all illegal money which is coming and out going out of india Uh, is regulated by the fema the procedure for initiation to investigate the to adjudication under the provision of fema can be divided into four stages so if anyone violates the rules of fema then enforcement directorate and a specialized ag- agency of the government of india uh, does the investigation so the first part is investigation section 37 of the act provides that ed and other officers of enforcement not below the rank of assistant director shall take up for the investigation the contravention referred in section 13 so that's the investigation part they do the investigation then complaint after completion of the investigation the investigating officer must file a complaint before the adjudicating authority appointed by central government under section 16 of the fema against the ls defaulter adjudication process 
if the adjudicating authority is the opinion that an inquiry should be held, it shall issue a notice fixing a date for the appearance of the accused either personally or through his legal practitioner or a chartered accountant duly authorized by him. The AA authorized uh, A is the authorized uh, adjudicating authority can allow the accused to produce such documents or evidence as it may consider relevant to the inquiry. However, the A is not bound to observe the provision of Indian Evidence Act 1872. Further, uh, once the AA issues the notices, the accused or the person appears before the AA and submits all the documents to justify his innocence. Further, the A Act provides that AA should dispose of the complaint as soon as possible to endeavor that same within the one year from the date of receipt of the complaint. So, within one year the AA must dispose of that particular complaint. In the event that complaint cannot be disposed within the said period, the AA has to record such reasons in writing and for not disposing of the complaint within the said period. So, even the government has given a very specific task that AA must dispose of that uh, application or complaint within one year. Final order. If upon consideration the A is satisfied that the accused has committed the contravention, he may by reasonable reason order in writing impose such penalty as he deems fit in accordance with the provision of the section 13 of the FEMA specifying the provision of the act or the rules and regulations, notifications, directions or order of any condition subject to which an authorization is issued by the RBI in respect to the contravention has taken place. So, then after hearing all the parties then they can impose penalties also. So, the last one is mechanism under the securitization and reconstruction of the financial assets and enforcement of securities interest act 2002. See when something goes wrong in business or in loan system then the opposite party is not able to repay the loan. In that scenario, we need a system where we can reconstruct, we, we can do reconstruction of the financial assets. Okay. Banks in India have been provided with a right to possess the security provided by the defaulting borrower against the loan and sell it to the recovered losses without any intervention by any court or law under the securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of security interest SARFASI Act 2002, which provides them with a mechanism to significantly reduce their NPAs. So, NPAs are non-performing assets. Whenever the bank, uh, any bank gives a loan to someone, private person or a company and they take some security also like you know some mortgage, some house, some property or anything you know. In that scenario, if the borrower is not able to repay its loan then the banks have the power to take that property or any security and sell it uh, in the open market so that they can cover their losses. It basically the objective of this law is to reduce NPA in banking sector. The Sarfasi Act enables banks to gain control over and auction the security against the loan in case the borrower defaults. Upon defaults, bank has the legal right to send a notice to the defaulter asking him to clear the dues in 60 days and then take possession of the placed security. A defaulter may appeal to the appellate authority within a period of 30 days from the date on which the order is passed. So, if a defaulter is not happy that okay, the bank is you know acquiring my security or my property and now they are going to sell in the open market, in that scenario they have a legal right to appeal also within the 30 days against the bank. Leading case against the Sarfasi Act, uh, a Pandurang Ganapati versus Viswas Rao Patil Murgus appeal number, uh, uh, civil appeal number 5674 of 2009. The judgment came in the view of conflicting decision by high courts on the issue of whether a cooperative bank can, can be called as banks as a financial institution under the Banking Regulation Act 1949 or whether the parliament has legislative competence to regulate financial assets of cooperative banks formed under the state law. The argument was that list 1 and 2 of the 7th schedule of the Indian constitution provides for distinct 
field of legislative entries for the state legislatures and parliament and once there is already a valid law made by the state referring to its own field there should not be a parallel parliamentary law on the same topic supreme court held uploading the central government notification on january 28 2003 with broad cooperative societies within the preview of the sarfasi act the supreme court said cooperative banks came come within the definition of banks under the banking regulation 1949 for the purpose of sarfasi act so it means that the cooperative bank if someone is not repaying the loan to the co uh, cooperative banks cooperative banks can also act as a normal bank and go for the securities the recovery procedure under the sarfasi act is also applicable to cooperative banks and there is no clash with the banking regulation 1949 the court also ruled that the parliament has legislative competence to provide procedures for recovery of loans under the sarfasi act with respect to cooperative banks the court was of the opinion that recovery of dues would be essential function of any financial institution and cooperative banks cannot carry on any activity without compliance of the provision of the banking act any and any other legislature applicable to such bank and rbi act the second case the matthew versus amrita uh, uh, kumar the supreme court held that the notice to borrower under rule 8 and 9 of the securities interest enforcement rule 2002 are mandatory requirement to conduct a valid sale of secured movable property by a secured creditor under the securitization act on the analysis of section 29 of this recovery of debt due to the banks and section 37 of sarfasi act the supreme court held that the condition in rule 8 of the rules have to be strictly followed in the sale of secured assets consequently if a 30 days notice as mandated under rule 9 of the rules is not provided to the borrower a valid sale cannot be affected and a secured creditor cannot rely upon an earlier notification of sale as such notification would be considered have been lapsed so you can see in the sarfasi they have made special provisions where the banks can go and recover the property so this law is very important sarfasi for the banking and financial institutions where they are paying where they are a lot giving lot of loans to people okay so this can also be a case of a corporate litigation especially if you are working in a financial institutions or a banking institutions where you are giving lot of loans to people so how to recover those loans instead of going for a uh, standard civil law litigation recovery suit you can go under the sarfasi act and recover your property so in this uh, lecture we have covered the meaning of corporate litigation that's the first part and second part how corporate litigation is important for the companies third part some regulators uh, activities like the sebi we have seen the activities of sebi how cases can be filed before the sebi what is the role of sebi in the internal complaint mechanism and then we have seen the sarfasi act we have seen the role of nclt and nclt under the companies act because lot of litigations are happening nowadays in the nclt because because all companies are following under the preview of company law okay so in this lecture we try to understand the dynamics of the corporate litigation and as a business uh, student or a business executive uh, the first question which i believe now it's not in your mind but normally it's in their in their mind that why i should know about the litigation this is job of the legal team or the compliance team my lawyers will take care of it but now after this presentation you have seen very clearly that very solid business decisions were litigated before the uh, regulatory bodies and before the court so like for example if you are working in a company and you are working in the finance side and you are not able to repay your payments you know like maybe some financial issues or some operational issues or some cash liquidity problems so in that scenario if the opposite party goes before the nclt then what should you do you know because now it's not the legal team's uh, responsibility obviously they will fight their case but the problem is coming from your office okay the cfo office the finance office in that scenario you have to make a strategy 
sitting with your lawyers that how to find a solution of this problem. Okay? Because once uh, NCLT or NCLAT issues order against you, then they will appoint management over you, maybe you will, you, you, you will be the out of the company. So, you know the laws are changing very fast in our country. Now, earlier we used to think that okay, if we are doing something wrong, people will go to the courtroom and in the litigation will take maybe 5 years, 10 years, 20 years and we should not worry about it. But now if you see the all regulators, they are very aggressive like for example, CB you have seen and IRDA you have seen that if you are doing anything wrong in the insurance sector, people can directly approach to IRDA. Okay? People can directly approach to SEBI if you are doing something wrong in the security exchange market. Okay? Uh, and in the banking sector, if people are not repaying their loans, like suppose it is in companies also, companies also take loans from the banks. Okay? So, in that scenario, if they are not able to repay their loans, then banks can start act, uh, action against the Sarfasi Act and first thing they will do, they will sell those securities or guarantees to the open market. Like for example, you have taken a loan of 100 crore rupees from a bank and you have given a property or a land or something you know as a security to the bank, the value of that property may be 110 crore. And if you are not able to pay your loan, the first job the bank will do, they will sell that property in the open market. Okay. And it is a very quick process, within 6 months to 1 year they are able to do it. And there is no civil court, no court can interfere in that process. Okay. So, in that scenario, uh, understanding the corporate litigation, how it works, what could be the business implications of the corporate litigation and how you can use corporate litigation management in your favor, you know, in, in your company's financial and reputational interest. I think this lecture will help you to design your corporate litigation management strategies uh, uh, in you know talking with your legal team and compliance team and your external lawyers and advisors and consultants. But ultimately this is job of a senior person in the management side to design uh, what would be their strategies for the corporate litigations uh, in uh, mediation, conciliation, arbitration or in courtroom or before the regulators. Thank you very much.